Hi, welcome to the Personality Hacker Podcast. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And today we're talking about introverts. Yeah. All you all you introverted people out there, we're gonna be talking with you today. Well, we just got done having a conversation with the person who runs Introvert Deer, which is a new website that focuses on, you know, issues, problems, challenges, things that are unique to introverts. And that got us thinking. I mean, I offered to write an article for her because introversion is something that we we have a lot of, I think, misunderstandings around, especially like you and I are both extroverts. Yeah. And I think we... Because you mean you and I have misunderstandings or people in general? People in general. Yeah. Well, I think... Okay, let me back up. I think we in general, people in general, have a lot of confusion about what introversion and extroversion even is in and of itself. Yeah. I think because it's one of the most accessible or easy to understand components of, say, the Myers-Briggs dichotomies of the four dichotomies of introversion, extroversion, sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, and judging and perceiving. I think people have sort of like grabbed their ideas about around what introversion and extroversion are and run with them. And so we think we know what they are. Yeah. We think we know what the root source is. And so there's a lot of misinformation about what it means to be an introvert, what it means to be an extrovert, and whether or not people who are introverted have advantages and disadvantages and vice versa with extroverts. So what was really intriguing to us was this idea of, you know, do introverts have a disadvantage in this world? Do introverts have things that are really frustrating for them that extroverts will never understand? And I, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> I think they do have issues that they that are very unique to them and that are less uh, understandable to a, a world that more and more prizes or rewards extroversion. So I thought it would be it, it's top of mind, right? We just talked to you know the person who runs introverts uh, introvert deer. And it was top of mind and it was, it's kind of time, you know, to sort of address this particular topic. And I think it's actually in the public mind right now, oh, in yeah. social consciousness. I keep seeing books written on introversion. I'm seeing books written on like introverts, leadership styles, dealing with being an introvert. The Introvert Advantage, I think, is a book title. Right. Like there's so much right now about introversion. And I think it's because of the time period in history that we're, we're at and I think that it's it's something that's top of mind for a lot of people right now. Yeah, I, I think in business, in life, social circles, you're expected to be extroverted in how you show up. We've got social media, we've got online video, uh, all the different ways that we're communicating now. And it's, you know, and at least here in the West, the United States and other, you know, Western developed countries, we're entering into what I've kind of thought about in terms of a performance culture. So the history of... Western progression has always been democratizing everything, right? Everything is being democratized to the point where everyone has accessibility to it. So we all have the ability now at this point to be stars of our own TV channels online or stars of our own radio shows or stars of our own blogs. We're, we can all become little mini Oprah's or little mini Tony Robbins or little mini yeah. you know, cultural icons if we want. And it really, I think, gives rise to this idea that we're in a performance culture. The grammar and the structure of how we communicate now is not so much the old way of like the written word, it's more you're out there, you're speaking out loud, you're performing, you're in front of a camera, you're on stage in a TED talk maybe or whatever. But that's like the new way that people are communicating more and more. And so this extroverted tendency, I think it is, it's a challenge for somebody maybe like, well, I, I'm a great writer, but I don't know if I want to get on a podcast or put myself in front of a video to mm -hmm. communicate or be in that performance culture. So what do I do in this world? Yeah, well, and Public speaking is a sticking point for a lot of people. You and I both, one of the things we've talked about with our upbringings, not that our upbringings were perfect, and there's a lot of things that we had to transcend from our upbringings, but both of us talked about one thing that we're both extremely grateful for in our upbringings yeah. that we, we really sort of integrated and we use all the time now, is we were pushed in the public light a lot. We were pushed to become public speakers, to be in front of crowds of people, to make sure that we could handle ourselves when we were sort of exposed. And because we built that skill, I think it's really easy for people like us 
to just go, well, just, you know, just join Toastmasters or, you know, just, just go start speaking yeah, at like different just, events and yeah, yeah just make, make it, it happen. happen. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think it's easy to forget that the reason why we're at a place where we're at is because we were trained to be here. Mm hmm. We were trained to do public speaking. We were trained to be in front of a camera or a microphone or whatever. And most people are not, even extroverts, it can be extremely uncomfortable. Well, even us. Like, I, I've noticed that, you know, as we scale up, as our podcast numbers go up, as we're creating more and more videos, I've had to sort of acclimate to this idea of really putting ourselves out there and go, okay, so if we get criticism, I'm going to have to just like sit with it and be cool with it and, you know, recognize that when you put yourself out there, you're going to get criticism and it's going to be okay. And you and I are coming from the perspective of two very, we're very extroverted and we're used to being in the public eye. So now let's take the other side of the coin. Let's talk about somebody who's quite introverted and maybe has never built the skill to be in the public eye. And here we are in this performance time period. Here we are in this time period where in order to put yourself out there, you're going to have to figure out that, that component yeah. in order to get a message across. And uh, I mean, I, I, I don't want to sound like, I want to sound sympathetic. I don't want to sound like it's like, oh, we have this great advantage. Uh, we do have a great advantage. I'm very grateful that my parents made sure that that was, you know, that I built those skills as I was growing up. And I'm trying to put myself in the place of somebody who, even mo most parents don't do that. Most parents don't push their kids to be in front of a microphone or to be in the public eye or to do public speaking. They get maybe some experience in high school or some experience in college with public speaking. But for the most part, most parents don't push their kids to do that. And so where do you build that skill? And if you're already an introvert, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to enter a world that is getting more and more, like you said, performance by nature. Yeah, and I would say that there are a lot of great performers that are introverts. People oh, that the get, best. Yeah, get in front of the camera, get in front of a microphone, get in front of crowds and they perform well or they speak well or they have great ideas, they communicate. I mean, obviously, you know, this is not this is not anything profound that I'm saying, but it just just because you're extrovert doesn't mean you're going to be mm. all gung ho to get up in front of somebody and, right. you know, not be shy even. I know there's a lot of extroverts that are terribly shy that don't want to get up in front of people. So uh, I think maybe uh, a good point to now would be to stop and maybe give some of our definition around introversion, extroversion, because there's a lot of things that can be lost in this, in thinking that introverts are shy and extroverts are bombastic and totally. outgoing, because I don't think that's actually what's going on for them. No, we have a bit of a different way of looking at introversion and extroversion than other people are used to. We always try, I mean, our goal is always try to get to like the foundational etymological approach of anything. When we, when you and I look at something that is a what, we always ask why. You know, it's yeah. like this. So this is what's going on, but why is that what's going on? And with the introversion and extroversion, uh, I've noticed that the emergent or the result of the foundational reason why ends up being the only thing that people focus on. Mm. Like extroverts are bombastic and introverts are shy. And for an introvert that isn't shy, that never rings true with them. And for an extrovert that isn't bombastic, that never rings true for them. So those are some of the behaviors that can emerge from being an introvert or an extrovert, but it's not 100% across the board. However, when you get to the foundational layer of what introversion and extroversion is, according to our perspective, that's going to ring true for all introverts and extroverts. And I think it's a good place to start. It's a good place to kind of start understanding what's going on. Now, when people peel the onion layers back of introversion and extroversion, usually what they say is, well, not all introverts are shy and all, not all extroverts are bombastic. It's more about energy management, that introverts are, they, they need to be alone to recoup their energy and extroverts get their energy by being in the environment or interacting with other people. Hmm. And we would agree with that, that that energy management piece is definitely a major foundational component. But we think that there's even one more layer underneath that when you look at the root reasons for why energy is managed differently between introverts and extroverts. And that is this, for an introvert, their inner world is the real world to them. And for an extrovert, the outer world is the real world to them. All right. So for an introvert, it's their inner world that is real. And for an extrovert, it's the outer world that is real. 
And so this is why energy gets managed differently between the two. For an introvert, when they interact with the outer world, and the outer world is not mirroring back to them their inner world experience or the world that is real to them, they've got to try to figure out why these two pieces of information are clashing with each other. Mm. They've got to reconcile two pieces of information that the outer, the, this inner world reality and this outer world feedback. And the reconciliation process can look like, you know, like an accounting ledger, right? Like you're trying to reconcile two different columns of numbers. And that takes energy. It takes mm. time, energy, thought to try to figure out why these two worlds are colliding with each other, why they're not mirroring each other. And so for an introvert, if they have too much of this, if their outer world is reflecting back to them too much dis- you know, disparate pieces of information from how they feel inside the quote unquote real world to them, then the more they have to reconcile those two pieces of information, the more taxing it's going to be and the more they're going to need some alone time to recuperate, right? Because that's just siphoning energy out of them. That's why for an introvert, if they spend time around somebody who they've kind of basically mapped inside their heart, maybe a mate or a child, and this you know, this person is really resonating with how they feel inside, right? Is really sort of reflecting back to them something that feels really good to them internally. Mm -hmm. They can spend tons of time around that person. Like they never get tired of that person because that person isn't reflecting back to them a disparate piece of information. They don't have to reconcile these two pieces of information. There's nothing in conflict there. Exactly. Now for an extrovert, the outer world's the real world. So if they spend too much time alone, well, that's not where the juicy content is. That's not where the interesting stuff is. So they go visit the outer world to get their data, their information, their, re- you know, basically what's going on in the real world. So they've got to get out into, you know, outside of themselves in order to really understand what's going on. And that doesn't necessarily have to be people. Mm-hmm. There are some extroverts that test out as introverts because the outer world doesn't have to include people. Sometimes it can include things like project management or getting out into nature or into an activity. It doesn't have to specifically have to do with people, but it's still the outer world that is the real world to them. You know, and that really brings up the fact of, you know, we teach our profiler training certification course, which goes into the system that we use and how we break it down and how we use it in coaching and business and all those things. And the the thing that I always tell people when they're inquiring about that is oftentimes when we're looking at personality typology and stuff, we look at behavior, we look at emergence, we look at the things that we see on the surface. For example, like you're saying, that extrovert who types out or who tests out as an introvert because their extroversion is not around people. So if you define extrovert as, well, that's a people person, and this extrovert's not using, you know, they're not engaging with people in their extroverted process. That's why profiler training, I think, is so powerful in, in how we teach is because it's not about the behavior of the emergent. It's about the mindset. It's about how the cognitive functions, how the mind is processing information, how it's learning information, how it's making decisions. Because for an extrovert that, that uses decision, that makes decisions that are non-people specific, it's going to show up much differently than an extrovert that is people specific. So that's just something, that's just a nuance that I like to throw out there for people listening. If you're listening, understand it's not necessarily the behavior it's it's what's happening inside the mind that the behavior emerges from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just something really key to keep in mind because that when you start mastering that level, you can really see the nuance and how people are expressing how their mind is working. And it shows up so different for different types. And this is something that, you know, for the introvert extrovert piece, for example, this is something that is not as obvious. But when you understand the system at the core level, mm-hmm. It becomes really profound because then you're able to really get down and see where people are are coming out, you know, how it's showing up for them, basically. Yeah, it's wiring. It's like the basic (laughs) wiring. And you can have two different systems, you know, basically running the same emergent software. You've got two different, say, graphic design programs. You've got GIMP and Photoshop that might both be basically kind of doing fundamentally the same thing. But if you look at the coding underneath the coding is radically different because they're using two different you know software languages or whatever so and that coding is going to show up in nuanced ways in how the program behaves so when you really understand the foundational component of what's going on underneath then you're talking about the wiring level and when something doesn't behave the way that was predicted right like you predicted let's say you assume that all introverts are shy and somebody comes along and they're not shy at all well, then your automatic assumption is that person is an extrovert. So you're going to start treating them like an extrovert. 
But if they're an introvert, right, they just don't happen to be shy, Yeah. then you you treating them like an extrovert is actually not going to be honoring their process. You're not going to be honoring what they need, which is probably more alone time. And so really understanding the wiring underneath all of it is, is r- truly important for being able to hold space and honor the people in your life and how they are authentically working, not just these markers that you've been taught to look for. Now, we've, we believe that if you're an introvert, if you're listening and you're introverted, you actually, it seems like you're probably at a disadvantage in the world, how it's swinging so extroverted. You've got, you know, this performance culture that, like I said, that's popping up. But we believe you have an advantage mm. as an introvert. We believe that because you're an introvert, you are able to grow more in the current context and the current culture that's emerging in our current modern world. We believe you have an advantage to grow even more than an extrovert has an advantage, like a normal built-in advantage, just by default. Yeah, well, just to go back to the whole concept of this society, why an introvert might not think that they do have an advantage is, I think we referenced this in a previous podcast, but there was a book that was written in the 80s that said that we're in the most over-communicated time period in history. Early 80s. (laughs) In the early 80s, the most over-communicated time period in history. And now we're, you know, we're... That's pre-Amazon, (laughs) pre-internet, pre-all that stuff. Yeah, we're like 30 years later, and we've got... We're just absolutely bombarded with communication, right? Like... We, we check our email numbers quite often and we'll see people who are huge fans who have purchased products from us unsubscribing from our email list because, and the assumption is because they get so much email, yeah. right? Not that we're recommending that you do that. Please don't do that because we love staying in touch with you. But I mean, it's like you can't really blame people for unsubscribing to things because they get just bombarded with email and they get bombarded with tweets and they get bombarded with, you know, cell phone calls. And the other, uh, the other component that I've noticed in this over-communicated time period in history is that people expect you to respond immediately. Oh, yeah. Like, you are, suppo- you are on this leash, this very short leash to all these, you know, forms of communication. And if you really want to really stay relevant, the faster you can respond, the better. If you don't respond immediately, people assume that you're off their radar and they just don't pay attention to you anymore. So not only are we massively over-communicated, but we have this anticipation of immediate response, which to an introvert is not comfortable, right? Like an introvert needs time to think. They need time to consider what they want to say. And if we're getting to a point where immediate and instantaneous response is sort of the, you know, par for the course now, then it really doesn't feel like an introvert has an advantage at all. But I agree with you. I do think introverts have an advantage in this world. Now, this is going to go into uh, where we're going to go right next is, I mean, we're not going to go very far down this rabbit hole, but we just really kind of want to talk about something that we reference a lot on the website, on the Personality Hacker website, which is your growth states. Every personality type has, you know, in the Myers-Briggs system, if we're going to, you know, reference Myers-Briggs or what we call the genius styles on our website, every single personality type has a breakdown of eight mental processes that all of us have access to and we all use all the time. But two of these mental processes are your preferred way of navigating the world. One is going to be a learning style or how your brain learns new information. And the other one is going to be a decision-making style or how you evaluate that information to come to a conclusion and decide how to, to behave in this world or how to navigate. And so these two styles, the learning and the decision-making style, they balance you out as a human being. They balance you out as a person. And the other thing we need be, beyond just being able to learn new information and make decisions on that is the other thing we need is we need a way to to check in with who we are inside or have an introverted component. And we also need a way to interact with the outer world and get outer world feedback, which is an extroverted component. And these two styles of learning and decision-making, they'll also represent your introverted state and your extroverted state. So one of these styles of learning is going to be introverted and one, or extroverted, and the style of decision-making is gonna be introverted and extroverted. And if you're an introvert, that means you lead with your introverted style. That means it's your preferred way of interacting with the world. And so your growth phase or your growth style is gonna be that second process, which is extroverted. So a context or a world, if that all makes no sense to you, if that was really kind of, you know, a bit esoteric or whatever, the, the, uh, the Cliff Notes version of that is that 
if you're an introvert, the more you can develop your extroverted side, the healthier you are. That is, that is the path of growth for an introvert, is to develop their extroverted side. And for an extrovert, the opposite is true. If you're an extrovert, the more you can develop your introverted side or your introverted mental process, the healthier you are. This balances us out. If you want more information on this, um, I totally wrote a, a whole article on um, what's called the co-pilot. I think it's on the front page right now, Personality Hacker. So go check out that article. And that kind of breaks down what I was, I'm referring to here. But really, the point is that if you are an introvert, developing your extroverted p- process is the path of growth. And if you're an extrovert, developing your introverted process is the path of growth. Well, we're in a world right now that celebrates and pushes us towards extroversion at every turn. So even though it looks easier for an extrovert to navigate this world, the world does not encourage them to go to an introverted space. It does not encourage them to go to that uncomfortable growth place. Mm. But for introverts, the world does encourage them to get more extroverted. The world does kind of push them to go towards their growth phase. So even though it might feel uncomfortable and not feel good to the introvert, the truth is, is that they're growing, they're being forced to grow in this world, which ultimately leads to them having more skills, more tools, and fundamentally a happier place to be. So it feels uncomfortable in the moment. But that's where growth happens, right? In our discomfort. And to an extrovert, it might feel more comfortable to be in this communicate over communicated world, but it's not it's not encouraging them to go to that introverted space that would be their uncomfortable growth phase. So in that way, it's kind of nuanced, but in that way, introverts have a major advantage in our current culture. Yeah, the culture supports a position for them to grow, which I think is really powerful. And I just want to mention one thing. This term that I've seen a lot is this idea of ambivert. Right. Where people say, well, I'm an ambivert. I've, I'm introvert and extrovert. And I, I take a little umbrage with that because I don't, I don't necessarily believe in the idea of ambivert. But really, they're somewhat accurate because we do all have an introverted and extroverted part of us. It's just one is, which one is dominant, which one is coming out as our preferred versus our you know, auxiliary or secondary. If you're an introvert, your auxiliary or secondary, if you're an introvert, is going to be extroverted. And just like you said, in the culture... It is going to support getting into that extroverted space, which will, by definition, put you there, and then you have the opportunity to grow. So as an introvert, you may not have an advantage of understanding how to navigate the world in just a normal, natural way, like an extrovert might, if if you're required to be extroverted all the time. In an over-communicated world. Over-communicated world. Right. But think about the, the growth opportunity this presents to you as an introvert. If you're listening and you're introverted... Think about the growth potential you have and approach the world instead of being like, oh, lamenting, oh, woe is me, I've got to navigate this extroverted world, all this over-communicated, extroverted you know, style that's emerging right now. Take it as an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to take this and I'm going to focus in on growing myself because there's a great opportunity here. I'm actually excited. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be maybe a little uncomfortable, a lot uncomfortable most likely. But think about the ability for you just to change that perspective and say, you know what, I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to use this to grow, to be a better person and to get out of my comfort zone and to round out my personality because we believe that that would be a very high leverage use of your time. Now, just being extroverted for, you know, extroversion's sake is, I mean, you can grow there. It really does help if you know your specific personality type. Absolutely. And the style of extroversion that is the growth path for your personality type. So not not all extroversion is equal for each personality type. Um, we talk to a lot of people who are INFJs in the Myers-Briggs system. Their growth pattern or the extroverted process that is growth for them is technically called extroverted feeling, or we call it harmony in the genius system. So harmony looks different than say a different growth um, pattern like an INTJ in the Myers-Briggs system, their growth pattern is called extroverted thinking or what we call effectiveness. So effectiveness and harmony look different. And the more growth they do in their specific style of extroversion is going to be more powerful. So it's not just being an extrovert. It's not just like answering your Twitter posts, right? Like that's not what we're trying to say. Like go answer Twitter immediately because that's the path of growth for you. Or jump on an elevator and start singing. Right, yeah, exactly. It's like that's not really what we're trying to indicate. However, what we are trying to indicate is once you know what your specific style of growth is, if you're an introvert, like whatever that 
we call it the co-pilot process in the genius system and the car model, or the secondary process for all you Myers-Briggs geeks out there, auxiliary process. Whatever that is, that's what you really want to focus on for growth, and it's going to be an extroverted process. And if you can focus on kind of cutting out the, like we are in an over-communicated time period that is going to pull you in all the extroverted directions. What's great about understanding that secondary process for you is you can sort of cut out the wheat from the chaff. You can ignore all of this, the all of the things that are trying to pull you in those directions that are not the path of growth for you, you know, in your extroverted process and just really focus on the ones that are. So like if you're an INTJ and extroverted thinking or effectiveness is your growth path, then you want to cut out all of the like sort of, um, you know, the things that need you to respond immediately in the moment, maybe anything that is, um, you know, pushing you to, uh, be like super uber social, you want to actually focus more on say project management. So the things that force you to get out in the world and sort of build something, right? Yeah. Or manage people, that would be your extroverted growth phase. Um, if you're say an INFP, right? In the Myers-Briggs system, um, then your growth path would be extroverted intuition or what we call exploration. So it's actually not focused on things like project management. It would be more focused on things like, you know, like travel, or getting to know new people. In fact, um, we had uh, uh, our friend Dan on a little while ago on a podcast, and he was talking about how his growth phase is exploration and as an INFP, and that he's just been traveling around the United States doing you know these car trips and stopping in at restaurants or whatever and striking up conversations with people. And he doesn't have to build like eter- you know like major lifelong relationships with them. He just kind of has to ask them their life story and get to know that person and then move on to the next novel piece. So it's going to look a little different. That extroverted growth phase is going to look a little different depending upon your personality type. The point of all of this, though, is that the world is encouraging you to go that direction. Yeah. And that's really an advantage for introverts as opposed to extroverts where we have to remind ourselves to get some alone time. Mm-hmm. We, we naturally are okay with being pulled in all these extroverted directions. We have to actually go, you know what, I'm going to shut everything off. I'm going to go off the grid. I'm going to quiet my mind and go to an introverted space. And the world is not really designed to give us that opportunity. Like, it doesn't want us to do that. So as extroverts, we have a disadvantage because we have to force ourselves to find some quiet time and say no to a bunch of opportunities that might be thrown our direction or a bunch of people or a bunch of projects or whatever our, you know, sort of our weaknesses as weakness, meaning not weakness of type, but weakness in sort of like that's that's the thing I love to do, so I want to keep pursuing it, right? So we have to kind of force ourselves to find that quiet time. And and that might, again, that might not feel like an advantage to an introvert, but it really is. It's really an advantage not in in that it makes you feel comfortable, right? Because growth doesn't happen in comfort. comfort. It's an advantage in that it's healthy for you. Yeah. It's a healthy advantage. So I just... I if thought, it's directed. I if mean, it's directed, exactly, to the right form of extroversion. Again, not just random extroversion, but directed extroversion. And, and that really brings us down to knowing your personality type. And if you're a new listener, we're getting... You know, if you're brand new to the podcast, we're getting a lot of new people on the podcast. And um, just to let you know kind of the heart and soul of Personality Hacker, we approach personality types not for their own sake, but as a tool for personal development, personal growth. And we believe that one of the best things you can do to start down a personal growth, personal development journey is to know your personality because that informs the type of material you read, the exercises you do, the type of work you do in your life. And so what Antonio's talking about, knowing exactly what type of extroversion you're gonna be growing as an introvert, that's powerful because that sets you on a trajectory of growth in, in your life. And so come over to the site, take, take our profile test. But that'll give you an idea as you're growing as a person where to put your emphasis of growth um, in your life for that. Yeah. Well, and I I really feel like, and for the extroverts listening, if you're an extrovert, uh, holding space for yeah. introverts is really important. Really kind of understanding where they're coming from and making it so that you don't push them too much into an extroverted space. They'll do it on their own time, which is good, right? They'll, they'll grow as it makes sense for them. And if you're an extrovert, just kind of giving your introvert, your introvert, you know, what is it? The love and care of your introvert, (laughs) giving them some space, some recuperation time, which is absolutely definitely needed and not feeling, not taking it personally. If an introvert needs a couple hours of alone time per day, letting them have that is really important. And 
you know, giving them some space is, uh, is, is really important. So we have a lot of introverts that are listeners and we just want to kind of take a couple minutes to, you know, tailor some content for them. Like let them know that they're understood. We're both extroverts. And so we hope that this is massively validating <laughs> <laughs> that a couple extroverts get it right. Like we get that the, you know, being an introverted in this over communicated time period is not necessarily the easiest thing. Yeah, absolutely. Come over to our website, personalityhacker.com. Again, take that, take that, profile test to find out our assessment to find out what your individual personality type is you can also join the growing literally by the day by Mm -hmm. immense amounts of numbers community over at facebook uh like minds just like you are joining over there to talk with each other to share information to offer advice to support each other around this idea of using personality types to grow and around the idea of personal growth because that's really what Personality Hacker is all about is growing as people. So it's facebook.com forward slash personality hacker or you can also join the discussion at twitter.com forward slash personality hack. And if you like our podcast, please, please, please feel free to leave a review on the iTunes channel. Uh, You have to log in, but please let us know how we're doing. We love feedback. We love to know how we're doing for you. So if you like us, please leave a comment and review. Let other people know if this is worth your time to download. And let us know if you'd like us to tackle a specific subject on our podcast. You can go to Facebook forward slash personality hacker and shoot us an individual message, or you can put it on the wall, or you can shoot us an email at info at personalityhacker.com and let us know if you'd like us to tackle a specific subject. Absolutely. So, my name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. You've been listening to the Personality Hacker Podcast. We can't wait to talk to you on the next episode.